Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo in The Bugle Sounds with Noah Beery. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Any history of motion pictures is bound to include a chapter entitled Wallace Beery. The average star has a screen life of only a few years. Wally faced his first camera in 1913. I directed him in a picture myself almost 25 years ago. And how many players of those days are still top stars? Wally's life has been a quest of adventure. From the time he left home to join the circus as an elephant trainer until more recent days when he found excitement in the skies, piloting his own plane. And you can always find adventure in one of Wally's pictures, like the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer hit The Bugle Sounds or like the present one he's working on over there, Salute to the Marines. With Wally tonight, we present that very accomplished actress of both stage and screen, Miss Marjorie Rambo, and also Wally's brother, Noah Berry. In the bugle sound, you'll hear Wally as a cavalry sergeant, an old-timer, out of place in a day of tanks and radios. In every enterprise, it takes the old-timers and the newcomers to make the wheels go round, especially in Hollywood where every year brings a new crop of young players to the front. What amazes me is that each crop of starlets seems more beautiful than the last. But perhaps, uh, perhaps Lux Toilet Soap has something to do with that. Imagine for a moment that you're in a darkened projection room, watching a screen test with a group of producers and directors. A young girl is playing the scene that may decide her entire career. At some time during the test, comes the crucial close-up. That's when a beautiful complexion speaks more powerfully than words. And that's when Lux Toilet Soap plays a little dramatic triumph of its own right there on the motion picture screen. Now, the bugle sounds for the opening curtain of the first act, starring Wallace Beery as Sergeant Hap Doan and Marjorie Rambo as Susie, with Noah Beery as Colonel Lawton. Truck transports and tanks. Clear the road and let them through. Clear the road there. Clear the road. Clear the road. As in modern life, the automobile has replaced the horse, so in modern warfare, the armored tank is replacing the cavalry. But there are still strong units of cavalry, dashing bands of hard-riding men, charging as always to the call of the bugles. One of these men, an old-timer from another war, Rides now at the head of his detachment, Sergeant Doan, returning to camp after maneuvers. Round her neck, she wore a yellow ribbon. She wore it in the winter, in the summer, so they say. When they asked her why the decoration, she wore it for her lover who's fur, fur away. How'd you like the maneuver, Sergeant Doan? Well, if you want my personal opinion, we'd have looked a lot better if those Spike and I's gadgets hadn't been underfoot. Of course, I ain't got no influence in this army. You don't think your tanks is here to stay, Sergeant? Don't ask me. You can never tell what them generals are going to dream up. Machine guns on kitty cars. Hitchhiking infantry. Field artillery dropping in parachutes. If they get the enemy as mixed up as they've got me, this army ought to win the war in a breeze. Here they come again, Sergeant. More tanks. Yeah. Get your mounts in hand, men. Here comes another one of them, their new hook and ladder outfits. Split the road. <laughs> now listen, men. Pull up no wise cracks. These boys are still American soldiers. Hey, you on the tank. What's the matter? Could they teach you guys how to ride a horse? <laughs> what comes out of those cans? Sardines? Oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. Take it easy, Cantini. Take it easy. You know, Cantini, I'm going to buy you a pair of blinkers. Them, them peanut vended machines is way beneath your dignity. <laughs> Forward, left! Detachment! Halt! Prepare 
to dismount. Dismount! Hey, hey, you. What's the big idea? No water in the trough? No bedding ready? Sergeant Stable Dillon, what are you doing? Giving a little sorry? Half this Sergeant Lane. He's from headquarters, troop. Well, I don't care if he's an adjutant general. Those horses got to be watered. Hey, Sergeant, there's a wash house rumor at the beginning of next week this camp's going to start getting up to 20% of them selective service boys. Draftees? Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, I seen the orders myself. Yeah? You're going to have your hands full, Hap. Imagine working in all them new jobs. Yeah, well, not me. I'm going to find out about it myself. Yeah, who are you going to find out from? I'll go and ask the colonel. That's what I'll do. Recruits. Drafted recruits. Me caught in the draft? <laughs> Carry on, you men. Rep Cantini down first. I got a crisis on my hands. Come in, Don. Thank you, sir. Thanks for seeing me right away, sir. Oh, you heard about the draftees, Don? Is that what you've come about? It's on the level, sir. That's right. They'll be here Monday. Mm-hmm. Anything else, Don? Yes, sir. I got a report of general physical breakdown coming on, sir. You see, Colonel, uh, my stomach's gone back on me. Well, Sergeant, from where I sit, it looks exactly the other way around. Sergeant Doan, in the last 29 years, you've wangled more furloughs than any other two men in the Army. And I've heard it rumored that you've been brought back to the post on a shutter. Well, somebody must have put something in my beer. I just had one, so help me. Ah, uh, no use, Sergeant. These new selectees must be whipped into shape. Well, the, the regimental commander misjudges me, sir. It ain't only my stomach, but I got a fourth cousin down there in El Paso, Texas. Now, he... don't tell me that he's dead again. This is the sixth time. What is this cousin of yours, a man or a cat? Ye- yes, sir. <laughs> no, well, no, sir. You see, he left a little, a little bitty girl in my charge, and she passed away, so... Uh, No, no, Sergeant, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid the national emergency must take precedence over your personal bereavement. Yes, sir. But who am I to tell that to a lot of drafted boys? We saw plenty of drafted men in 1918. There were no complaints then? No, sir. The drafted men was just as good as any regulars, That's the point exactly, Sergeant. Well, sir... Well... I guess if that's the way the colonel in the army feels about it, why, it's orders. Why, we'll take them selectees and we'll make horsemen out of them in no time. Thank you, Sergeant. But it isn't going to be necessary to make horsemen out of these new men. Sir? In the future, this regiment will be known as a 19th Armored Regiment. Armored? Mechanized? Tanks? Me, tanks? I thought I spoke plainly. Mechanized down to the last steel bolt. Oh, but... Oh, well... What about our horses? Well, we keep a few mounts for a while. Sir, first sergeant don't apply for our transfer to a cavalry outfit. Now, see here, Don. Within a year, you're going to be eligible for retirement. You don't want to go as a private. You don't want to sacrifice your first sergeant's rating that you've earned literally through sweat and blood. I've always been a cavalry man, sir. For your own good and for the good of the service, your request is disapproved. That's all, sergeant. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, Don. You like a weekend pass? Thank you, sir. My cup a little. Oh, whoa. Whoa, Contini, whoa. Well, I wouldn't want that nobody else would tell you about this but me. The colonel looked me square in the eye and tells me that the service ain't got the more real use for you and me. Why, I... I've served under him since he was a shave tail, fresh out of the academy. I ain't re-enlisted all of these times just on account of a pension. I was aiming to die in the Army. Well, I'll retire next year, and they won't get me back for any more active service either, I'll tell you that. I'll just start one of my old wounds acting up again. Let them ruin their old Army in their own way. When I go out, why, I'm going to buy you out with me, too. How about that ham and egg on white? Take it easy, soldier. You'll get it. Cartery. Where's that ham and egg? Cartery. Have it up, Miss Susie. Oh, uh, here you are, ma'am. Cartery? Is Sergeant Dawn awake yet? Uh, no, ma'am. I just been back to the park. He's sleeping on that couch like he did. Well, go and wake him up. He can't use my parlor for a... Well, never mind. I'll, I'll get him up myself. Oh, oh. Thanks. Thanks for 
is surrounded with tanks. Get them tanks off of my head. Look out. Tanks. Don't. Tanks. Stop that, will you? Wake up now. Oh. Wake up. Oh, Susie. How'd you get here? Get up off that sofa. I got work to do. No, is this your place? Well, how'd I get here? Well, not in your own power. Now get conscious. Oh. Oh, is this tomorrow the day following? It's Monday morning. You got to get back to the fort, don't you? Monday morning? Oh. Oh, my head. Susie, I was having the most terrible dreams. Well, I ain't got no time to psychoanalyze you now. Get up off of my settee. Oh, look out. Don't push. Don't push. You know I'm a sick man. Come on now. Get up. All right, Susie. I'm up. I just... Oh! Oh! Oh, my toe. I broke my toe. My toe's broken. Well, why don't you look where you're going? Well, what do you put a shutter on the floor for? Well, that shutter was what they lugged you in on last night. <laughs> You look like a package of homework for the medical students. Oh, yeah. I remember, I think. Well, pick it up. And by the way, Don, the next time you set out to forget your troubles, I wish you'd make it a point to wipe my address right out of your mind, too. No. Susie, you know something? I wasn't dreaming. I got troubles. Real troubles. I've been myconized. You've been what I've been tanked. You certainly was last night. <laughs> no, no, Susie. They they turned my outfit into a lot of machines. That shutter and all of that was just to deaden my sufferings, that's all. No more horses? No. No more horses? Hmm. Well, Hap, you're sure going to seem like a stranger smelling a gasoline. Now get yourself washed up. You will feel better after you take a shower. And I mean, get right in under it, you hear? Oh, sure, sure. Susie, you understand. No matter no matter how strong a man is, why, a good woman's sympathy helps a lot. Oh, get in there, you big slob. Maybe soap and water will take that snibble off your face. Cottery! Yes, sir? I want you to fix up a tray with a pot of coffee, donuts, and a rare round steak. And maybe a little of a whichever fruit looks nicest today. You use your breakfast for the sauce. What's the matter, Susie? Ain't you got no eggs? Too fried on that round. Thanks, Susie. So, so I says to him, I says, <clears throat> Colonel, I says, swallow them eggs. Yes. So I says, Colonel, now you make up your mind one way or the other. Either the tanks have got to go or I'm going. There ain't no use begging and pleading with me because I got plans made for my retirement. Then I said, <laughs> there's a little young lady's name involved. Did that not be? <laughs> Meaning me, I suppose. Certainly, meaning you. You never heard of me being pickled, did you? Hmm. Just think, Susie. Us with a little farm and a nice pasture and a great big barn for Contini. Well, I thought Contini was just going to move right into the front room with us. Oh, Susie, now that ain't no attitude. And you might get a cow, too. I can attend the milking and churning in my spare time. And of course, if there's any plowing you want done, just let me know. Oh, Susie, you know I ain't going to stand for Contini pulling no plow. And that ain't no kind of appreciation, either. <laughs> that ain't right for you to do that to... Uh... After me wanting to take you out of an old restaurant where you got to be waiting on a lot of people. Could you give me some idea when all this heaven on earth liable to bust out? What? When's the sermon going to take place? The Marion? Oh, well, you know, Susie, I, I got nine months to serve yet. You can never tell what's going to happen, Susie. They might send me overseas any minute. And you know how I am about duty. Why, you big top toad. Eighteen years now I've been moving my place of business from one army post to another. And all I've got to show for it is a counterfeit nine months promissory note that ain't even in writing. Susie, don't you trust me, Susie? Trust you? <laughs> I may be crazy, but I can still do simple arithmetic. And it ain't as if I couldn't have married plenty of other soldiers. <laughs> Sometimes I think you've got me hex. Well, that, that's because I'm attracted to you, Susie. Well, I wish you was. Uh, it's just your bashfulness, that's all. What other soldier could you get? Well, uh, Russell, for one. Russell? Why, that glad-handed snake ain't even in the army no more. You can forget about him right now. I don't know as I'd care to, even if I could. I guess I'm a free woman. Yeah, too free to suit my taste. Well, then take your taste and get out of here. 
At least Russ used to pay for the meals that he ordered. All right. If that's how you feel about our romance, you can present me with my statement right now, and I'll settle the bill. With what? Well, I can... <laughs> I'll give you a note. <laughs> you don't even know how to sign your name. That's not very kind of you, Susie. Hello, dude. <laughs> well, for oh. heaven's sake. <laughs> What's the matter, no big, big, glad hand? Russell, we was just talking about you. The age of miracles certainly ain't over. Yeah. Speak of the devil and he shows up pronto. <laughs> how are you, Sue? Down to the eight of sight with sore eyes. Flew all the way from Philly just to see you. Well, I declare, Russ, you ain't changed a mind. Yeah? Well, then you better start locking up your silver wire. And the old sour gal is still with us, huh? Down if it don't look like the old man was planning to live forever. Well, it's sad the way he's failing, though. Well, you ain't no chicken. Me? Still lick my weight in wildcats any morning before breakfast. Well, I don't know whether you've had your breakfast or not, but you can't lick me now. Now, sit down. Stop it, Oh, now, Hap, cut it out. I'll knock his block off. Hap, it's just old Russ clowning around. Yeah. You know how I am, anything for a laugh. <laughs> how are you, pal? How's the old outfit? The outfit's much better off since you left, and don't call me old pal either. Now, is that nice? Let bygones bury their dead. That's been my motto ever since I quit the service. You never quit no service. You was thrown out with a bobtail dishonorable discharge. And being as such is the case, I don't want to have no social relations with you whatsoever. Oh, half. I ain't never held it against you for turning me in on that cooked up evidence. Fact is, that court martial was a gateway to my present success. Yeah, <laughs> success. You <laughs> heard me. Oh, say, uh, where's that package? Here, Sue's a little token I brought you from the French mode shoppy in Philly. Oh, Russell, you shouldn't have. Uh, what? Let old acquaintance be forgot? <laughs> you know me better than that. I'm warning you, Sue's. I mean, Susie. You know, you can go to jail for accepting stolen property just the same as being a party to the original crime. <laughs> oh, I hate to open up such lovely wrappings. I'll bet whatever this is, it cost you a pretty penny. <laughs> Fence don't mean nothing to me, Suze. I'm doing great these days. Yeah. Oh, look! Look here, a slip. Oh, Russell, you sweet boy. Why, the whole thing's a hand on peekaboo. Hey, listen, Russell. Where do you get off at to give a garment like that to my financé? <laughs> huh? Your financé? I don't even know who you are. That clinches it. That clinches it. This is going to be a famous massacre. Take out your teeth, Russell. <laughs> now listen, quit it, both of you, quit Oh, he fights for everything, Russ Now you'd better get yeah. out of here Yeah, okay, Suze, I'll see you later <laughs> He'll get used to having me around again Why, I'll murder him Now, Hap Let me go Hap, you just try and go through that door after him And I'll hang one right on that fat chin Now this is the end Well, it sure would be if I had brains enough to butter a biscuit Sending off a man who brings me a special wrapped up present every visit. Eighteen years and you ain't loosened up with a single little token. Da I never gave you. Oh. Okay, Susie, okay. That's all right. Well, you, you, you did give me something once. It was the time that you was ordered to Washington for the inauguration. You sent me a plush postcard of the monument with the, the gold moon and the silver stars. Well, that, that's what made me feel so bad, Susie. I thought you forgot. Me? Forget? Why, half it's still right here, right above my place of honor over the fireplace. Guess my heart's just stronger than what my head is. Oh, Susie. <laughs> oh, half, half, I'm helpless with you. You old sheik. Oh, Susie. <laughs> In just a few minutes, Wallace Beery, Marjorie Rambo, and Noah Beery will return in Act Two of The Bugle Sounds. And now, let's look in at the holiday party. Here's a young soldier. I'm sure starting the new year out right, Mary. Dancing with you again. Gosh, but you're pretty. And later, when Mary got home... My, what a wonderful evening. Oh, it's late and I'm tired. But not too tired for my beauty facial. Not after what Jim said tonight about my movie star complexion. Yes, Mary's a girl with a lovely Lux Soap complexion. She has the kind of fresh, exquisite skin 
that always draws admiring eyes. And being wise as well as lovely, she never takes chances with complexion beauty. Here's what she does. Always at bedtime and during the day whenever I want a quick beauty pickup, I take an active lather facial with Lux Toilet Soap. First, I smooth the rich lather well into my skin. Next, I rinse with warm water and splash with cold. Then pat my face dry with a soft towel. Simple, but it works. And the reason this complexion care works is that Lux Toilet Soap is a real beauty soap. Its creamy lather is active, carries away stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt. It gives skin peach bloom softness, leaves it feeling exquisitely smooth. Nine out of ten Hollywood stars, lovely women everywhere, use gentle white Lux Toilet Soap. They know it's as fine a soap as money can buy, mild and pure, kind to delicate skin. So why not make a New Year's resolution right now to give your precious complexion real beauty care every single day with Lux Soap Active Lather Facials? It's one New Year's resolution you'll want to keep because soon you'll find this gentle Lux Toilet Soap Care, followed faithfully, will work for you, too. Here's a suggestion. Put Hollywood Beauty Soap, Lux Toilet Soap, on your shopping list tomorrow. Now... Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Bugle Sounds, starring Wallace Beery as Sergeant Hapdone and Marjorie Rambo as Susie, with Noah Beery as Colonel Lawton. <laughs> Through the gates of the camp march the selectees, the manpower of America. They can't even keep step yet, but in the tilt of their chins and the strength of their bodies, lies the raw material of a mighty fighting machine. American men drawn from the front line of democracy. Company! Halt! Halt, I said! Oh, that's fine, fine. We doing okay, Colonel? Never mind the Colonel, sub-soldier. It's just plain Sergeant Doan. I line up about three feet deep, military fashion. Come on, snap it up, snap it up. Now, men, just for your information, you're looking at a soldier. I've been detailed to teach you knock knee shut ins how to ride. No, that ain't right no more. You're going to ride, but it's going to be in tanks. Now, I ain't going to order you men to right face or give you any real military orders until I've educated you which hand is which. So keep cool now and just oblige me by turning around and facing up in that direction where I'm pointing. Oh, no. Very well. Okay, all right. Now, when I tell you to start walking, walk. And keep on walking till I call to you to stop. Now, start walking. Walk. Oh, boys, you're a mess. Come on, boys, the Army's got its eyes on you. Pull in your chins, throw out your chest. All right, now, you fearless patriots, get ready to slow down. One, two, three, stop. Oh, no, no, oh, the, the things that I have to put up with for my country. New recruits report for physical. Recruits report to drill, Sergeant. And salute, and salute. B Company, on the target range. B Company report for bayonet B Company, we focus tank inspection. Reasonable weapon of this tank is a gun with sufficient firepower to penetrate the armory of practically any foreign tank. Today, we're just going to take a little ride and kind of look it over. But in a week or two, you'll be running them in maneuvers. Put your helmets on and let's go. Pull this sardine can into line. See if you can miss a couple of those ditches, will you? Oh, what an invention. Say, Sergeant, who do you think is winning this battle? Go away. Go away from me. I'm a casualty. I've been bouncing around in here like a tennis ball. <laughs> you used to bounce around on the horses, too, Sergeant. Not on my head, I didn't. <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, Contini. Hello, pal. How are you? Hey, you'll have to excuse me smelling of gas and oil. Yeah. You said it, you said it, I sure do, but I can't help it, Contini. Hey, look at the dirt on you. I got to speak to that there new stable sergeant. Well, Contini, we've been through a lot of things together, and I wouldn't want that you would have saw those maneuvers today. It looked just like the Atlantic Squadron waddling around with wheels underneath it. Don't see why I didn't enlist for the Navy in the first place. No, oh, 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 it's all right, it's all right, Contini. Just some more of them there new tanks that they're unloading for this smelly outfit. I'll close you in. 
I wouldn't want that you'd see the kind of work that I'm doing these days. All of them men, nice young men that would have made good cavalry soldiers. Come on, get those tanks moving in there. How's it going, Noah? Oh, it's all right, sir. We've unloaded ten already. Hey, what's the matter there? That tank's on fire. Get it off the car. Hey, that tank's burning up. Huh? Get the hose. Look out for you running that tank. Tell those men to jump off. Get out. Leave it alone. Look, it's heading right for the stable. Cantini. The stable Cantini's in there. Holy. It's smashed right into the stable. Cantini. Get every man working. If those stables catch on fire, they'll burn like tinder. Go on. Yes, sir. Turn it up. It's gone, sir. The tank exploded. Turn it up. Now just examine some of these tanks. The motor compartments are filled with oil rags. Oil rags. Don't move any more of them. Tell the men to let them alone. Don't move those tanks. Captain, I want a guard here. These machines have been tampered with. There's going to be an investigation. In the meantime, no talk from anybody. This is the Washington affair. Yes, sir. It's all right, Cantini. I'll get you out all right. Are you hurt? Are you hurt, old fella? Yeah, come out of here. Don't cave in on it. Help me move these timbers. I got to get that Cantini out of there. Come on, lift. Okay. That's out. it. A little more. Come on, Cantini. Come on, boy. Dylan, go get the veterinary quick. Please, please lay still, old fellow. Well, you want to help get yourself well. That a boy. Well, Doc, he's okay, ain't he? You're going to... Well, he'll do all right, ain't you? I am sorry, Don. Cantini's days of service are over. What? Oh, no, no. Oh, there's nothing can be done for him. You don't want to see him suffer, do you? No, sir, but more oh, than let me give him something. At least the pain will be gone. What is that thing you've got there, Doc? The hypo. He won't feel it. It's the quickest thing we know. No. Not for Cantini. Thank you, sir. There's only one good thing for an old soldier. No, I know how you feel. A shooting is against regulations. We'll really? weigh the regulations, Major. Oh, oh, very well, Colonel. Major, do you still carry a piece of chalk in that satchel? Uh, why, yes, uh, yes I, I think I have a piece. It's just a sort of habit from the old days. Give it to Sergeant Doan. There you are, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Uh, no Cantini could talk to you. Rather have it this way. Go ahead, Don. Yes, sir. No, no, Cantini. It ain't sugar this time. It's best chalk. If I make a little mark on your head, it makes it much easier. Just a little. Take my revolver, Don. No, thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to be left alone just a minute. Now, of course. Strong old fellow. Now, now, please, try not to look at me just for a minute. That's right. That's right, old fellow. Of course, he's not absent without leave. But, Jack, John's been gone for five whole days. Sooner or later, you'll have to take official action. Maybe you didn't see him hanging around those empty stables with that sick glare in his eye. Now we'll go right on, extending his path. Well, I hope he appreciates it. Rolling around in some gin mill is my guess. I'm going to send out some of his old-time pals who know all his hangouts. They're going to get him back here. Not without a fight. They'll take care of him. Well? I'm Mr. Clyde to see you, Colonel. He refuses to state his business. Oh, yes, yes. Send him in. Come in, please. Good morning, Colonel. Ah, glad to meet you, Clyde. Thanks. I see you're expecting me. Washington wired me to give you full cooperation. Sit down. Thanks. Do I understand that you've already taken some steps here? Yes, we're working on an angle, but it may take some time. Have any more tanks come in? Yes, but they've been okay. Uh-huh. Well, Colonel, so far the FBI hasn't had much luck either. We made a couple of arrests in New York, but we're holding off. Until we can get an open and shut case against the top man, these small fry arrests only tip off our hands. You make this outfit we're up against sound pretty big. Big? They're operating right across the country. General Sabotage Incorporated. Everything from arson to demolition. And no particular prejudice about murder on the side. Hmm. We're led to believe that they've moved their headquarters out into this general territory. So it follows that this is the place to look for the leader of the organization there, Mr. Brain. See. Si. I'll be sticking nearby till we get him. In the meantime, this number will reach me around the clock. Good. I'll keep you, Mr. Brain, in mind. 
There are some of my men here, one old sergeant in particular, that I'd like that gentleman to meet. Morning, Jack. Hello, Harry. Any word on Doan yet? No, but Susie's waiting outside to see you. Susie? Come in, Susie. Good morning, Colonel. Well, how are you, Susie? Come, sit down. Thank you, sir. I... I hope I ain't making too free coming here to ask, but is there any news from Hap? Haven't you seen him, Edith? No, sir. I ain't seen him but once since it happened, and then he wouldn't even speak to me. You see, Hap don't think too clear at times like this, and now he's hurt pretty deep. You and me both know how much he thought of that horse. Yes, Susie, that's true. But you've been around the Army long enough to realize we can't allow our personal feelings to interfere with things. Colonel... I, I know you got your duty and your brass to keep polished. But if you just try to remember all the years that he's put in, given honest, faithful service to the USA, now it can't be that all of his campaigns don't count for something. And his purple heart, you know, for wounds. Oh, Colonel, Colonel, you won't mind me bringing it up. I guess you still remember how he got one of them. It was your first service for both of you. It was your first wound. Hap was a sergeant even then, trying to look out for a new u- new lieutenant who'd been hit. Susie. I suppose that you'll have to bust him now for, to a private for what he'd done. Well, likely he won't take it so hard coming from you. Oh, Colonel. Colonel, once you catch up with him, I'll take right over and I'll straighten him out for you. Only don't let some court martial throw him clear out of the army, will you? I don't think old Hap could stand it. There just wouldn't be nothing left of him. Nothing. Susie, I... Who is it? Private Dillon and Crims are back, sir. They say they have their man with them. Send Dillon and Crims in here, alone. And now, Susie... Please, you, you better go along. Please. Come along, Susie. I promise you that someday you'll have your soldier back, with all these stripes, too. God bless you, Colonel. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Susie. Come in, men. Private Dillon and Crims reporting, sir. We brung him back. Good. What happened to your face, Dylan? Why, uh, it was... Uh, it was a runaway milk wagon, sir. Yeah. It hit me, too. Ah, see, see. <laughs> the streets are full of them, aren't they? I think you two men better stop off the hospital before returning for duty. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Don, come in. You. You looking for me? Yes, for six days. But Colonel Seaton tells me that your pass is in order, more or less. I ain't been on no pass. Well, well, there'll be no charges, however. I I think I understand what you've been going through. You don't understand nothing. Sergeant. Sergeant! I ain't no sergeant. I ain't no private, neither. I ain't just plain busted out of the Army, mister. Like it or lump it. Me, I like it. Don't. Don't do this to your service record. Service don't mean anything to me in this Army. Nothing means nothing but tanks. Tanks! Tanks! But I ain't going to stand for it. I'm still a yellow-legged cavalry man, even if you've forgotten how to be one. Hap, shut up. Shut up, nothing. I'll bust out of any guardhouse you put me in. When I go out, it won't be on a pass. It'll be over the hill for good. Hap, sir, help me if you don't shut your Don't you out. lay your hands on me, you gasoline cowboys. I'll mark you up right. There ain't no army big enough to hold me. I don't like you, and I don't like that old man behind that desk there anyway. I don't like anybody. That's enough. Now I've been sitting here, Don, trying to save an old soldier. No matter what your service record may have been, you've worn out all your credits in the Army now. Take this man to the guardhouse. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Wallace Beery, Marjorie Rambeau, and Noah Beery in Act Three of The Bugle Sounds. Now, here's Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Libby, didn't I see you dashing into the Hollywood canteen the other evening? You certainly did, Mr. Kennedy. I wanted to speak to Barbara Stanwyck and Irene Dunn. 
They were there serving coffee and donuts, and weren't they busy? I guess those particular donuts tasted extra fine to the boys. <laughs> yes, indeed. To say nothing of the ones Marlena Dietrich was serving. Do the stars work at the canteen regularly, Libby? Mm-hmm. Night after night, they're on the job. Even after a long day at the studio. Not much time to relax these busy days. No, indeed. And that's why, screen stars tell me, their beauty soap is more popular than ever. Well, Lux Toilet Soap gives quick, easy complexion care that works. Yes, and there's another reason, too. The stars find their complexion soap makes a wonderfully refreshing beauty bath. Barbara Stanwyck, for instance, says she always uses Lux Soap as a daily bath soap. She enjoys the rich, creamy lather. Says it leaves skin fresh, really sweet. Well, Libby, that's because Lux Soap's lather is active. Does a thorough job of removing every trace of dust and grime. Marlena Dietrich told me she likes the way active lather cleanses thoroughly, yet so gently, too. And Irene Dunn says she enjoys the lovely, clinging fragrance Lux Soap leaves on her skin. Yes, the Lux Toilet Soap perfume has special appeal for fastidious women. It's a very delicate, flower-like fragrance. I wish every busy woman would discover how truly luxurious a Lux Soap beauty bath can be. A wonderful way to make sure of daintiness, screen stars say. Thanks, Libby, for bringing that real beauty tip from three such lovely stars. A practical tip, too. For though Lux Toilet Soap is as fine a toilet soap as you can buy, it's very inexpensive. It's hard milled. That means that each cake can be used to the last thin sliver. So try making this fragrant white soap your daily bath soap, too. You'll find it a delightful way to ensure exquisite daintiness. You'll agree with famous screen stars who say Lux Toilet Soap is a real beauty soap. Get three cakes tomorrow. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Right after the play, there'll be a backstage chat with Wallace Berry and Marjorie Rambo. Now the curtain rises on the third act of The Bugle Sounds. Dishonorably discharged. That was the sentence passed on Sergeant Doan. With his kit bag flung over his back, he walks through the camp gate, a solitary figure. His shoulders slumped, but his eyes still glaring defiance. Now he makes his way to Susie's place, looking for rest and comfort. What are you doing here? Oh, they turned me loose. They knew they couldn't hold me in that old tin hoose gal. I figured I could stop here for two or three days till I found a place to go. Well, full up. What? I mean, we ain't got no vacancy for you. You better start in looking somewhere else. Why, Susie, you, you don't know who you're talking to. This is half. I don't take no more pride in you, Hap. Maybe this is the first time I'm really seeing you. A big, selfish bull who never did care for nothing but his own stupid feelings. Now you've finally sold me out for him. <laughs> Just like you sold out the army that took you from nothing, put you in a uniform with stripes on it, and made you look like a man. Well, I hope you enjoy the choice you made. Susie, I... Now get yourself and your truck out of here. I don't put up with no traitors in my hotel. Susie, you'll be sorry because... Sorry? I think I wish you was dead. Okay. Okay, Susie, I'll go. Oh, Hap. Hap, no, wait up a second. Hi, Hap, how's the boy? What do you want, Russell? Now, pal, don't get me wrong. I don't want a guy to want to hear no clowning. I said, what do you want? All I ever wanted was be friends with you, but you always make it kind of hard. Come on, tell how about a great big glad hand, huh? Okay, Russ. That's the stuff. Hap, you know what I said to Suze when I heard about your trouble? Darn if this ain't a dirtier deal than to ditch me up, I said. Uh, what are your plans, Hap? I ain't got no plans. No? No. Uh, there's at least one silver line into it. Maybe now you'll find out that old Russ ain't such a wrong guy after all, huh? How's about it? Well, you're all right, Russ, but I don't... That's this stuff. What do you say we run over to Handel's and maybe have a couple of beers, eh? Beer? Well, I don't know, Russ. Don't I... worry about nothing, Hap. When the time comes, we'll dig up some kind of a job. And meanwhile, just play along with a pal who's riding the luck. Yeah? Well, sure. Thanks, Russ. Come on, Hap. This is the place here. Hey, what kind of a job is this? Now, you just leave that to me. I'm taking care of you, pal. It ain't a very stylish neighborhood, is it? Listen, you got to eat, don't you? What style got to do with it? Well, here we are. 
Hey, what's that for? Oh, just the way I got a knock on Well? Russell, is the boss here? Inside. Okay, come on, Hat. Who is that, Joe? Russell. Hiya, Mr. Leach. Oh, how are you? Mr. Leach, this is my pal, all wool in the yard wide, if I do say it. Hap, this is, uh, this is the boss. Oh, pleased to meet you. How do you do, Don? Now you just sit right down. We don't stand on any formalities here. Cigar? No, thanks. A little drink? No, I... That's all right. We don't think any the less of you for that. Dependability is what we value here. Well, so you thought you'd like to have a little talk about maybe joining our organization? Well, listen to any kind of a proposition you want to make. Russell, you told me you'd prepare this, man. Now, everything's going to be all right, Mr. Leach. The sergeant's just kind of stand off at first. Don't call me sergeant, will you? Oh, Hap, relax. You don't waste any love on the army, do you, Don? I mean, you no longer feel any sort of obligations to your former comrades? Why should I? They got their tanks, ain't they? Sure. And your old regiment is getting a fine new quarter of tanks within the next few days, did you know? The old ones are going to be shipped to one of the ports on the Atlantic coast. No, I ain't heard about that. But you might feel some reluctance about assisting in an effort to prevent their delivery. I wouldn't care if they ran them all off into the Gulf of Mexico. You see, Mr. Lee, sit and I tell you. Keep your mouth shut. Here, Don. In this envelope, you'll find enough to get you a couple of suits of clothes and a decent hotel room. If your work is satisfactory, this money is just the beginning. Yeah? Well, uh, what do you want that I should do? There are just three things that we have to know. The exact date and hour when the old tanks will be shipped east, the route that they're to follow, and the port of consignment. Okay. You think it'll be that simple? Oh, sure, it's easy. Say, what are you aiming to do with them tanks? Soon, you are now a part of a great organization. We don't answer questions, and you don't ask them. All right, whatever you say. Come on, Hap, I guess a couple of old soldiers know how to take orders, huh? Good night, Don. Good night, thanks. Forget it. Nichols. But uh, Clark Dirt we must deal with. Did you get a line on him? I was listening behind the door. That don't man is dangerous. Dangerous? Well, typical of the workers here, perhaps. No discipline, no sense of his place. That's it. The first time that guy loses his temper, he'll talk. I don't think so. I don't think any man who has worked with us is going to incriminate himself. They only intern foreign agents. They hang their native-born spies. <laughs> It's me, Colonel. Doan. Come in, Doan, quickly. Got a better report, Colonel. Glad to see you, Sergeant. Thank you, Colonel. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, sir, but they are the most suspicious lot of guys I ever met. Yes? Well? Well, they put me on the payroll, sir. Good work, Sergeant. Well, let's have it. Did you contact the top man? Well, there's one man there, square-headed fellow by the name of Leach. I'm going to personally wrap his spine around his neck. Leach? Oh, no. Now, we have his name here. He's just an executive man. Yeah, that's what I thought, sir. The top one ain't showed up yet, but a couple of times I've felt his eyes right in the middle of my back. That's the man. That's the one. You've got to stay in there until you meet him. Yeah, we'll throw the old cavalry brand into him, sir. There's one thing we can work on. They've got an idea that this outfit is getting a whole new bunch of tanks. They think that we're shipping the old ones to some port, and they want to know which one. Now, I thought if I could give them that information and make them think that it was true, why, they'd trust me just like they'd trust their mother. Hmm. What's the matter, Colonel? Three days ago, I received a secret message from Washington with precisely the information you've just given me. Well, how did they find that out? Evidently, your friends get their information very close to the source. This is going to be a big responsibility. Maybe it's worth the risk. Here. This is a copy of the order, plans, and data shipment, and full details. Maybe you can use it as a letter of introduction to Mr. Brain. Whatever the plans of your friends are, you'll have to reach me before you can take a thing and take effect. I must have time to act. You understand? Yes, sir. I'll report in, sir, or else. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, wait. You need any money? No, no, no. I'm doing fine. I'm riding around in a great big car with white side walls and one of them uh, psychopathic drives. <laughs> I see. Well, you'll need a gun, though. Here, take mine. No, thanks, sir. The, this is the same one that that I used on Cantini. Oh, Hap, I, I really hated to use Cantini's death like this. Oh, well, I I guess I don't mind so much as though it had happened in ordinary peace times. You see, Colonel, it's like this. Wherever he went to, why, the old fellow's still fixing to make trouble for the enemy. Sir? What is it, Sergeant? I was just thinking... Of course, orders is orders, as long as the colonel gives them. But ain't it ironical that I should be playing nursemaid to a lot of stinking tanks? Sergeant! I beg your pardon, sir. Beg your pardon. All 
right, you men. Start loading those tanks. Everything on schedule, Jack? Yes, everything. Except don't. Haven't heard from him yet? Not a word. Those tanks will be leaving here in an hour. Between here and their destination, there's a good 400 miles where anything can happen. What are you going to do? Well, we have to take a chance. Don't get through to us in time. He's got to get through to us. Hey. Hey, where are we anyway? What highway is this? Relax, pal, relax. And I didn't know we was coming so far. Hey, Mr. Leach, how about getting out and stretching our legs, huh? We're not stopping for anything just now. Well, we've been driving about three hours, and I'm hungry. I ain't had a bite to eat since lunch. You ate enough steak and eggs then to go to sleep for the winter. Well, can I help it if I'm healthy? Mr. Leach, I'm hungry for a hamburger. Just control it, Don. We've got a schedule to keep. When our little job is finished, we'll have a feast. Yeah, but... Uh... Well, what if I find it necessary to keep from fainting? What about that? My whole inside is gurgling. I can't concentrate. There's no time. Will you try to understand that? No time? Yes, I understand. This is it, Mr. Leach. Outside, Hap. Hey, this joint don't look like no cafe to me. Over this way, Don. What are we heading for a barn for? That ain't no place to eat. Maybe they got a cow in there. We'll let you milk it. <laughs> hey, why don't you shut up? Mr. Leach, I'm hungry. Honest, I... Couldn't I just take the car and kind of run up the road somewhere? And... I said no. We're here to do a job, and you're being paid to take orders. Okay, okay. Give him the signal, Russell. Right. Who's out there? It's okay, Jerry. Open up. Oh, hello, Mr. Leach. Hello, Russell. Hiya. Inside, Don. Yeah. Well, Jerry, how's everything going? Okay. Where's Hank? Why isn't he with you? He's over at the bridge making a final checkup. Bridge? What's he doing over at a bridge? Oh, Hank likes bridges. He's studying to be an engineer. <laughs> that must be Hank now. Hank? Yeah. Hey, watch out, Jerry. I'm stringing the wire in here. How are you, Hank? Oh, hello, Mr. Leach. Be with you in a second. I just got to connect these wires to the detonator and we're all set. Good. Jerry... Have you had any report from that train? Just that it left the station on time. Let's see. Uh, she ought to be passing the bridge in half an hour. 12.35? At 12.35 on the dot. Well, there we are. All set. Hey, you. Well, what, what's that contraption over there? That's a detonator. Yeah? What's a detonator? Well, I tell you, brother. It's like a fuse on a firecracker. Only there's more noise at the finish. <laughs> Hank, are you sure you put a big enough charge down there? <laughs> sure, plenty. Check all your connections. Now, look, Mr. Leach, I know my work. When I press this plunger, the bridge goes up. And if by accident a trainload of tanks happen to be going across at the same time... Oh, now I get it. Yeah, you must be a bright guy. <laughs> sure. All you got to do is to press the plunger. Get, you... get away from there. I just... Get away. Are you crazy? Get over there and sit down. What's the matter? I didn't do nothing. Oh, you fellas don't think I was going to push that thing before the train came, do you? Now, what for would I want to do that? I don't know. Sit down over there and keep your hands off things. Understand? Sure, sure. Say, where's Nichols? Isn't he supposed to be here? He'll be along any minute. That's kind of funny. Last thing he said he'd be here at half past 11. He's over half hour late now. Don't worry about Nichols. He wouldn't want to miss the show. He'll be here. Captain Hart, how are we doing? Right in schedule, Captain. We'll be hitting the Snake Creek Bridge in ten minutes. Good. Keep it up. What time have you got, Russell? Uh, 12.32. We should be hearing that two-mile whistle. Joan, are you sure that train was to start at 8.10? 8.10? Sure. Say, Mr. Leach, who is this Mr. Nichols you're expecting? How many guys are they aiming to cut in on this? Now, don't worry, Don. You'll be quite safe trusting yourself to Nichols. There she is. Well, it's on time. It's too bad Nichols will have to miss all this. Hank, take the detonator. Everybody else, quiet. Listen, Leach, I don't like the boss not being here. Yeah, what if he's been picked up? Keep quiet. Are they suddenly going to be smarter than Nichols? There she goes again. Any minute now. Ready, Hank? Yeah, all set. Watch it now. Yeah, watch it now. 
Get away from that detonator, Hank. What? Come on before I slug one in your chest. What are you doing with that gun? I'm aiming it, and I'm a good shot, too. Now get over there against that wall, the three of you. Yes, you. Get over there. Go on, move. Stay where you are, yeah. gentlemen. Don't if you move a finger, I'll let you have it in the back. Nichols, what? Yeah, drop your gun down. Go on, drop it. That's right. Sorry I was delayed, gentlemen. A little matter I had to clear up. Nichols, what is this? Hank, get on the detonator. Okay. Mr. Doan here, gentlemen, is a spy for the United States Army. He was thrown out. So it would seem. I happen to know different. Very nice work for an amateur, Sergeant Doan. Now, it seems you've been extremely helpful. A one-man whistle, gentlemen. We won't have long to wait. So you're Mr. Brain, huh? I beg your pardon? Mr. Brain, the big noise. Who works very quietly. I'm warning you, Mr. Brain, don't let that guy touch that detonator. You are warning me. Very amusing, Detective Doan. Well, I'm resigning as a detective right now. Here's where the army takes over. Get him! Look out! I'll wreck the lot of it. Keep him away from that detonator! Hang on back! Give me a shot! Take a shot at this, Mr. Brain! Still on time, Captain. That'll be Snake Creek around the turn. Call 35, is that right? On the dot. Five. What time do we hit Portville? Well, let's see. If I can keep it to... What the... What was that? What happened? The... Oh, the bridge, the bridge! It's out! I, I... I just stopped in time. Another second we'd have gone over. Here you are, Captain. There's the wires. The bridge was blown up. Follow those wires and find out where they lead. It's up this way, sir. Put that barn up there. Bring 20 men. Fan out around the hill and advance on order. <coughs> Open up. Open the door. Come on in, Captain. I... I got some friends in here. Don't. What is this? I want you to meet these fellows, Captain. Russell, Hank, Jerry, and that guy there draped over the plow is Mr. Brain. Dylan, get those men. Captain, I... I had to blow up the bridge. It was was the only way. Don't. Are you hurt? Well, just a scratch, I guess. Maybe a couple of... Don't. you think that we're here today simply to do honor to a soldier. But the chief reason is to give you all a long, clear, thoughtful look at a veteran American serviceman. A man who knew that no sacrifice was too great to make in the line of duty. Not even the good opinion of his friends or his personal reputation as a soldier. And he has managed at the end of a long and useful career to crowd in one more act of crowning achievement. And he has also made room in his body for... Two more wounds, which, if my memory serves me correctly, makes the eighth and ninth that he has received in the service of his country. Also, if my memory serves, this medal will be his tenth. Oh, Hap, I'm so proud of you. Susie, that means more to me than medals, no fooling. Will you come and see me soon, Hap? Sure I will. You know, and you know what? I'm going to see you a lot, Susie, and maybe when my time's up in about eight months, why, I'll be asking you a question, Susie. Well, I've been waiting 18 years. What's eight months? <laughs> well, Sergeant, here comes the new tanks. What do you think of them now? Sir, I always did say them tanks was practical. <laughs> the Dougal sounds, but we'll sound one more call for Wallace Berry and Marjorie Rambo. Ah, thank you, C.B. Say, it was really great to have you in the play tonight, Marjorie. Remember the picture we made together, 20 Mule Team? Wallace, how could anyone forget working in a picture with 20 mules? <laughs> <laughs> I imagine, I imagine a few mules didn't give Wally any trouble after his elephant training experience with the circus. Well, you can do anything with animals, C.B., if you talk to them right. As a matter of fact, I've got to go up to uh, my ranch in Wyoming in the morning and talk to a lot of cattle up there. Now, what could you possibly say that would be interesting to a cow, Wally? Well, I figure a little pep talk will make them fatten up quicker. 
I, I hope you don't warn them what they're being fattened up for, Wally. No, no. <laughs> I just tell them they've got to help win the war. What's doing here next week, C.B.? Uh, just a moment, Wally. You've all heard star after star on this program tell Mr. DeMille what they think about Lux Soap. Now, I've been in Hollywood a long time, and I want to say from my own observation that Lux Soap is not only tremendously popular with movie people, but deservedly so, and of course, there must be a good reason for it. And you can find the reason quick enough if you try. One word to the far wise is plenty, Marjorie. If the word is Lux. Now, about next week, we're going to present a sparkling comedy. It's called She Knew All the Answers. And our stars are Joan Bennett and Preston Foster. She Knew All the Answers is adapted from the Columbia picture. It's a gay story of a chorus girl who goes to work in a broker's office. Joan Bennett as the chorus girl and Preston Foster as the broker will tell us all the answers next Monday night. Sounds like a lot of fun, CB. I'll be listening in. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I think you two have a future. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Joan Bennett and Preston Foster with Eve Arden in She Knew All the Answers. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Here's a message for the ladies. Are you one of those housewives who's been saying, I don't have enough waste fats in my kitchen to make any explosives? Well, don't you believe it. One tablespoonful a day of waste cooking fats and greases from every American home would make 540 million pounds of smokeless powder a year. So save every drop of waste fat. Put them in a clean, smooth edge can and sell them to your meat dealer. In about 21 days after you turn these fats in, they'll be going into making munitions to help your son, your brother, or your husband on one of America's fighting fronts. Heard in tonight's play were Leo Cleary as Russell, Fred Mackay as Dylan, Charles Seal as Leach, Norman Field as Nichols, and Eddie Marr, Tyler McVeigh, Arthur Gilmore, Griff Barnett, Bruce Payne, Horace Willard, Lee Millar, Jr., Joe Latham, and Herman Waldeman. Our Lux Radio Theater production of The Bugle Sounds, starring Wallace Beery and Marjorie Rambo, has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty care that nine out of ten Hollywood stars use to help keep their complexions beautifully clear and smooth. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Joan Bennett and Preston Foster with Eve Arden in She Knew All the Answers. Sugar rationing. Butter rationing. Meat rationing. These are wartime measures. But no matter what foods are rationed, you can't afford to ration your vitamins. You can't afford to be vitamin deficient, tired, nervous, low in resistance. Get all the vitamins you may need with VIMS, the new vitamin mineral tablets. VIMS cost only a few pennies a day. VIMS match the six vitamin formula doctors endorse. They also give you three vital minerals. VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Get that VIMS feeling. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.